Next is the skill of the futurist. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, this was the number one skill that the 140 CEOs told me they believe is the most important. There were a couple others that were tied for second and third, but this one came out on top. Now, Isaac Asimov is my favorite science fiction writer, and he wrote a book, a series of books called The Foundation Series. And in the Foundation Series, there's a character known as Harry Seldon. And Harry Seldon develops something known as psychohistory. And psychohistory is this theory of being able to predict the future on a grand scale. Not like for an individual like you and me, but for the galactic empire. Right? So big picture scale prediction. Now, when most people think of a futurist, that's what they think of. They think of somebody who predicts the future. But that's not what we do. Futurists don't predict the future. They just help make sure that people and organizations are not surprised by what the future might bring. Now, a lot of business leaders keep saying, we want somebody who can see around corners. As we all know, nobody can see around a corner. So what do you do? If you can't see around a corner, what do you do? I play a lot of chess. Uh, it's become a, a big passion of mine lately. And if anybody who's played chess or if you've heard of chess, you know that there are a lot of moves that you can make. There are more possible moves that you can make in a game of chess than there are atoms in the entire universe on an 8 by 8 square. Right? So it's a virtually limitless game. But when top grandmasters play the game of chess, they don't know what move their opponent is going to make, but the way that they think is different. A novice chess player will just say something like, I'm going to move a pawn. I'm going to move my knight. I'm going to move my rook. A grandmaster says, I'll move my pawn. If my opponent moves their knight, then I'll move my bishop. And if I move my bishop, my opponent might move either their knight or their pawn, or maybe they'll move their queen. And if they do any one of those things, here are some options that I have. In other words, they think in terms of scenarios. They think in terms of possibilities. And this is a very, very critical skill to have because a lot of leaders are very stuck, oftentimes, in very linear thinking. They have trouble changing course. They have trouble getting rid of uh, outdated practices. They have trouble challenging the status quo. They find one path. They stick to it. That's a recipe for failure. You have to be able to think like a futurist in terms of possibilities and scenarios different ways, right? So basically what happens is you see around multiple corners at the same time instead of just one. Now, the other big challenge for a lot of leaders I see is they keep asking this question of what is the future of work? But that is the wrong question to ask because it assumes that there's only one future, which there's not. There are a lot of different things that could happen. But when leaders ask that question, it makes them passive. What is the future of work? In other words, What's going to happen, and what do I got to do? Right? It's like somebody's going to punch you in the stomach, and all you can do is just kind of like tighten up. Instead, the right way to think about it is, what is the future of work you want to see happen, and how are you going to build it? Much more active. Right? You design, you create, you shape, you build the future. There are a lot of tools that futurists use. In fact, there's a master's degree that you can get on Foresight. But one of the most useful tools that futurists use is something known as the cone of possibilities. And the cone of possibilities essentially asks four questions. And if you can learn to ask these four questions regularly, whether you need to make a decision, whether you're focusing on a strategy, just learn to kind of play around with these four questions in your mind, and you'll see that the way that you think starts to change. So the first question is, why might something happen? And you can kind of play around with this right now. One of the common areas that this is oftentimes applied to is jobs and automation. So a lot of people say lots of jobs will be automated. Some people say jobs won't be automated. So how would you think through something like that? Well, why might that happen? Why might there be a massive jobs exodus? Why might millions or billions of people around the world become unemployed as a result of technology? What else might happen? So if that doesn't happen, what's another scenario that might come up? Well, maybe everything stays the same. I don't know. What do you want to happen? If you could control and shape anything and have the desired outcome, what would you make it be? And the last question is, what might impact why or why not something would happen? So what might impact why a jobs exodus would happen? Why a jobs apocalypse would happen? What are the factors that would impact and influence that? 
if you can start to learn to think with these questions and start to play around with these different scenarios in your mind, you're going to change the way that you think. And you're, not gonna, no, you're no longer going to have a linear path that you follow. You're going to start to branch off into all sorts of little paths. And that will very much help you in the decision-making process. Tom Wilson is the CEO of Allstate. And he summed this up very nicely. Leadership is about shaping the future not just reacting to trends. All of you in this room have tremendous responsibility to build and shape the future of your company. Not to just worry about what's going to impact you and what's going to happen to you in the future, but to actually build and shape what that future looks like. <laughs>